Bows. 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 Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Hey. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official, Miss Jamaica. Walk on. Hey, what's going on with you? Not none. Say, man, we got a special guest in the house today, man. Say, the man, you know, I seen a award he got, man. I believe it was with AT&T. Mm -hmm. and, and the guy seemed like he really, you know, was being praised. Now, I don't know what's going on over there, but he about to get us into it today, man. Is it David Williams? It is. It is. David C. Williams. <laughs> That's right. David Say, C. Williams. Say, man, one of the baddest dudes to come through. Hey. <laughs> Say, so, so, man, so... AT and T, that's that's the whole pillar of the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Like he 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 gets on, he does things that help the culture, diversity, all and all that. I heard him speak, and the ladies was going wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 on the on the TV, on the right. television, right? And I was like, what is they all excited about? The nigga look all right, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing my thing, you know. A nigga try to measure himself, uh. yeah. <laughs> Say, David, what's up, man? Hey, man, what's going on, man? Man, what's I going just, on? man, I, thank you for coming on the show. Hey, I like the, I love the vibe in here, man. Hey, man, it's we good. try, we it's try, good. man. We yeah. love God, so I know it's right. Hey, that's all you need. That's all you need. <laughs> so, right. what's up, Steph? Talk to my man, David, man. So, um, you're an engineer with AT and T. Actually, I'm not an engineer by trade, and yeah, yeah get it the, right. Yeah, let me. <laughs> Well, I mean, if we're gonna go around the horn, so okay, I'm not an engineer. I'm not an engineer by trade. Um, I actually uh, went to school for marketing, but um, the award is not just an AT and T award; it's a national award. Wow. And so, many corporations um, had nominees and candidates submitted, and the engineering deans of the HBCUs, all the HBCUs, um, Lockheed Martin, and U.S. Black engineer and um, uh, information technology magazine were the selection panel and they selected me as the winner for the 2021 Rodney Atkins Legacy Award at the Black Engineer of the Year Award STEM Global Competitiveness Conference. That's big. And what did they That's use big. To, to measure Thank you. the qualifications of the award? Oh man, you can check in my math? <laughs> uh, okay, all right. So, Tell us um, a little bit about it. Sure, so well, um, the nomination um, phase of it um, was crazy. I had uh, four CEOs submit letters of recommendation on my behalf. And so that's, wow. yeah, it's crazy. You know, I wow. mean, folks from all around the world, CEOs in other countries. Wow. Um, and you personally know all of these CEOs. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. How long have you been doing what you're doing? Of course he won. Let's go. Uh, right. <laughs> um, I've been doing robotics process automation for about three years now. So I'm still a little new to it. Awesome. Robotic and process automation. What what comes with that? Yeah. So th that's the technical term in public. We would just say bots. And so in most people's minds, when you think about bots, it's like the stuff when you see folks on um, the gram or Twitter and they get a bunch of likes or views or whatever. Those are bots sometimes doing different okay. things, right? You know, that's hot. Yeah, wow. Well, I mean, I don't know if on social media if it's that way, but through the work environment, what we can do with that is imagine there's um, a mountain of work that no one can ever get to. Okay, well, we can assign, we can build bots to go handle that work that elbow grease wasn't enough to handle it. Or imagine. Um, you know, um, it, look in the mobility space, you know, it's so competitive. And so as other companies are dropping their prices, we have to compete. Right. And so we have to find ways to do things more efficient. And so maybe what we were doing before manually, maybe we can automate that so that we can go do something else more important manually. Cool. Right. And so it's not that you're taking away jobs. You're, oh, no. you're restructuring. Exactly. Everybody. Exactly. Because exactly. that's the first thing people think about when you think about bots. People are like, oh, you're trying to get rid of my job to go give <laughs> robot. It to no, no, we haven't right. we haven't fired anyone from something like that. No. Yeah, but you yeah. said you got thrown into this, so because you did marketing, how did you end up in yeah, this? Yeah, so um, I'm an anomaly, right? Okay, and I would argue that um, boss talk 101, shake it, is an anomaly. Okay, right. A lot of folks may not have expected, you know, I'm from Dallas. Yeah. You know, I'm familiar with what Elam Road looked like That's 15 right. years ago. Me too. Right. Very few people could have guessed accurately that such a successful 
podcast would be hailed Located. from mm-hmm. this particular area of say Dallas, that. right? Say that. Right. Right. That's saying a lot. That's saying a lot. Just the fact that it exists. Anyhow, and so um, as an anomaly, right, you don't always fit the mold, right? Mm-hmm. People don't know what to do with you, mm-hmm. right? You're kind of not in the right, you're a square pig in a round hole, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I've always found different ways to make it happen, I guess. You know, um, I, my mother would say, make a dollar out of 15 cents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when I mentor people in the corporate space, I say, look, you know, if you wound up in a mentor circle with me, God know your story, because he definitely know mine. And wow. so, you know, I know it's probably been rough on you. Wow. If you're here with me. Yeah. Okay, and so my goal is to give you some insight on some things, and hopefully you can skip some of those potholes that I've run into myself. And when I think about that, look, if a CFO could make a dollar out of 15 cents for one or two quarters, they'd be CEO. But we live with that our entire lives. We go to work. Do we take it in, though? Often we do not. We leave all that insight, all that ingenuity and wisdom at the door. Yeah. I would encourage folks to take it inside that corporate office with you. Wow. Just convert it a little bit so that it fits the corporate protocol. Give you an example. If I told you, hey, um, let's have dinner. Sit down on the floor, cross your legs, and eat with your hands. Hey, man, what's wrong with this dude? Okay, well, if we were on the other side of the world, that's how they... I was about to say, I was about to say, that's the Indian style. Right, that's the protocol. And so... Um, just take what you know and fit it into that protocol, and I think you, pe- we can be successful at that. I like it, man. I, I like the fact that 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 you found your niche. That, that you, yeah, yeah, you found what 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 really you fit, and, and you you have to enjoy it. How long have you been over there? Uh, twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah, man, that's a long time. Yeah. What and, were you and, doing before? The bots. Oh my God! Um, oh, before bots, it's like, right. it's like before the twenty, 20 years. years. We no, go there. No, 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 we no, go no. there. Wait, wait, wait. Before the twenty years, uh, I was eight years old. <laughs> and, uh, okay, yeah. so um, <laughs> yeah, you were young. <laughs> but um, before bot, oh my God! So before it's the that, same I was, company you're. With. It is, and so I've changed jobs a lot of a lot of times. Before that, I was doing. I was in a social media. Um, chat and tech support group. And wow. um, although it was technical, I started a sales program wow. that drove about ten million dollars the first year we launched it. Before that, I was chief of staff for all mobility customer service, about 60 call centers. I flew around every week. Wow. Um, every Do you have week. kids? I have one son. He's okay. um, 22 now. Shout oh. out to the 22-year-old. Yeah. Alex. How old are you? Wait a minute. He's like, yeah, uh, don't put that boy out there like, like that. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> David ain't trying to hear that. No, because yeah. when you, this, you know, when you talk about flying around, that's why I was asking about kids because, you know, normally kids – usually be like needing that time and sure. then you're gone all the time. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So there was one job that I actually turned down and this was a very lucrative job, right? It had a, um, a very, what's it? A politically handsome, mm-hmm. very handsome, right? When you get some handsome money, some different money. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know, I, I really, can't I really, say, I really heard the stress like you, that. You know, handsome money. Handsome money. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's Luke, Luke right. on the Luke next really, level. Yeah, really, really yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. turned down some really handsome money. Why? So that, um, because it was a job I would have I would have had to take out of state. Mm-hmm. And at the time, my son and his cousin were both living uh, okay. under my roof. And okay. so I didn't want to, yeah, I, I didn't want to leave um, his mother there with, you know, Two boys to raise. That's, let's that's, that's let's go all the way back when you came into AT and T when you first started. You know yeah. what what drove you to go to that location oh, to look for a job? Oh man, okay, so I got to keep it real. Yeah, shout out to Denise Gibson. Denise, shout out, baby. We on Boss Talk One Hundred One. Yep, she 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 turned me on to AT and T. Um, it was SBC at the time. I got uh, I yeah. went into the role. It was non management and. Um, it was working in a call center. I was doing central office operations. It wow. was kind of technical. It was cool, but it didn't pay a whole lot. But I was happy because it was, you know, it was a corporate job. Was it, it, was, it was a lot of calls, people calling in by complaint? Yeah, it was stuff like that, yeah, but yeah, mostly yeah. technical, you know, kind of fixing stuff. Oh, and yeah, so, y'all dealing with that twisted pair. Right, exactly. All right, okay. No, okay. I'm an engineer, Tip and ring. Okay. I've been doing it for 20, what, about so 30 years? So we can get into homes all that. All right, well, man, we're going to have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, I just, right. I've been on mine like that, too. So, you know, uh, we we kind of kind of competitors. I got But you. at the end of the day, I remember when y'all came out with the V-Rads and everything. Okay. I had okay. to go investigate that. I got you. 
got you. I got you. Know you know what I'm saying? I so, I, I mean, I've been doing it for man, a long time, bro. Man, I'm with and you. And I, I was going to write a book, man. Uh, you should. Two of the only black guys in the room. You got to help me with that. <laughs> He's like, that's a serious that's topic. Heavy, ain't it? That is a serious. When do we start? Well, let's do it. I'll do it with you because I've been knowing it for my job twenty something years, like you. And you know how exactly how and that you know feels exactly as well. where I'm coming from. Oh man, was that heavy? You know, I've been thinking oh, about man. it a long time. Oh, man. I've been doing it for a long time. Oh man, I started in '89 though. Okay, so I'm okay. ready. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, it's it's a trip. You you bring up a good point about the only two black guys in the yes, room. Yes, sir. Somebody might steal our idea. We all better not, because we coming for you. But somebody, y'all can't. We well, did this. And, and I'll say this, you know, it's, <laughs> it's one thing you say two black guys in the room, but, you know, I feel like sometimes in the black community, man, we have to deal with racism on both sides. That's why I wanted to talk about it from that angle. Right. And so, you know, there's racism. Every race will have to deal correct, with racism correct. in some way, right? There's race from outside your race. Correct. Right. For some reason, people are afraid or fear, um, competing with you living with exactly. you whatever you know and then there's racism within, within. And, and right mm -hmm. we call it colorism correct mm -hmm. right and so unfortunately it's like school days has never ended yeah right we have um you know short versus tall light versus dark yeah. all, you know all these things and then we have folks that you know maybe you're too corporate for the hood to accept you correct mm -hmm. but when you go to work you're too I black can tell you some stories mm -hmm. for your mind the upper echelon maybe to accept that's you. right mm -hmm. even if they're the same color that's it right and i've been there you know sometimes you know i, I once heard someone say it best you know sometimes when folks live that duopoly they they run into a place where they want to be the only person in the room yeah the only yeah. person of oh color I, in the i've room. seen it Right, because they've had to live alone. They so feel they more comfortable. Right, they way. couldn't be. And so, you know, and then once that person gets in a position of power, how many people don't get to break that glass ceiling? Yeah. Because they feel comfortable in the room by themselves. And so I say that for, you know, black people, none of us have come far enough. None of us are winning enough mm -hmm. that all of us aren't afraid when the police pull us over. That's real. I don't That's care real. how much money you make. Don't matter. You call somebody when that those red you and blues have to. go right. Because you're worried, right? Okay. So if that's the case, if all of us are still in that space, how can we compete against each other? We're still in the collaboration phase. If you're a starting quarterback with a backup quarterback in high school, that backup quarterback's job is not to hate on the starting quarterback. It's to help the that's starting right. quarterback go get the biggest contract, mm -hmm. recruitment, college, whatever, they, they can. And yeah. then when that starting quarterback gets on in college, not waiting until the, the end of time, when he gets on, his job is to go back and help that backup quarterback. Man, man, you talking now. Right, yeah. and now, check this All out, day. now both of them are in college having this conversation versus both of them never making it to college mm -hmm. because they hated each other out of both of the jobs. So Working each together. one help one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just Look, love, I, I love you. I love your uh, your spirit, your energy. You know, I like the way you um, the way that you you engage about. I can see your I can feel your passion, I you know, and, and, and that's what is that's what it takes to understand how to how to evolve through change. Right. See, a right. lot of people don't understand how to evolve through change. And I've seen those obstacles where doors shut and then doors may be open. But those same things that you were expressing, I've seen how you could be categorized. Like I said, I could give you some cold scenarios because yeah. I've been in those rooms. Yeah. And I had to make decisions that sometimes I didn't quite understand or like, but I did it. And then sometimes I, I, I just... I just basically was being me and, and got ostracized because of that. So, yeah. you know, I've been by, by yeah. my own people, not just. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it don't oh, just man, be, oh, man. It don't <laughs> just be the other culture. I've, I've been told, I mean, I mean I've been told some, some hurtful things, called some hurtful things. Yeah. I mean, and, and I, um, I held it down. Yeah. I held it down. And I was, I think I paved the way. I can remember working uh, at TCI many years ago. Okay. In, off of. Broadway and Centerville, and I was there, and I started helping to bring the ITT students into our realm, okay. and it was people that looked like me, and I was proud right. of that because I was the only brother there for like five, six years. Right. So it made me feel like I had accomplished things. The same thing go with the job I'm at right. now. If 
for the last 20 years, I've seen that wave change. I was the first one, but yeah. I didn't end up the only one. Yeah. And I think and that was the up. reason why right. I was able to open those doors because I'm the one that could speak the language to the upper echelon. And then I could speak to the brothers from, from the bottom. So I bridged the gap. I, I didn't build a wall. I pretty much extended a bridge. It, it, we are so much better together. Look, I, I, I call it the cheat codes, man. Look, um, my math, I bring my best self. You bring your best self. Let's get it. And let's put one and one together and make 11. That's it. Okay, let's do something exponential together. Let's get to the end of the line. Let's skip all this other stuff. It's not one and one makes two. Not one and one, we're going to get three. Uh-uh. One and one, we're going to make 11. Mm. Bring your best self. Wow. I'll bring mine. Let's go do something exponential together. That's what's up. Right. And so having someone like-minded who is reaching back to help, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, those young folks can see, those newcomers can see, right? And, hey, man, I'm getting this insight from this guy, but, man, maybe if I partner up with him, we can go do something. Right. And we'll both get out of this department and go to the next one. Yeah, yeah. Or we can hate on each other and, you know, figure out how that goes. Yeah, I got a cousin over there with your name, Kevin Smith, man. Shout out to Kevin Smith. <laughs> That's my guy. Been at at t for over 20 years, man. All right. And uh, we both... We we have conversations, yeah. And um, just just something, man. When you when you've been dealing with something for so long, and you got somebody you can pick up the phone and they can relate to you, that's that's something on a whole nother level. I mean, sometimes my wife can't can't give me what you or Kevin can give me because mm -hmm. of what we've had to deal with in these corporate offices. Well, yeah, man. And you know, and so you bring up such a wonderful point. So, like, when I think of the black culture, right? Um, Unfortunately, a lot of that culture was lost um, crossing over, right? For sure. Right, one continent to another. Um, but one thing remains in the black culture, right? It's hard to really figure out, is, uh, is it the dancing? Is it the clothes? Is it the jewelry? Is it the music? Right. There's one thing in black culture that remains. I don't care all these other fans. The one thing that remains is you walk past another black person. They don't speak to you. Kind of rub be some kind of way. Oh, yeah. Like, what was that? Yeah. Like, no, even if you don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Even if you you're like, something. yeah, like, what was that? Yeah. Right. Because it, it rubs our culture wrong because our culture is to communicate. Correct. But somewhere along the way, we lost our way. Yeah. And we yeah, stopped yeah. communicating. Yeah. And then when you get black men to stop communicating, right, now you're talking about the head of some things that are not you know, coming together and I, forming to unite. I've been at a lot of lunches with a lot of people. And I always, if I see you, it's like that every time. Every time it's going to be acknowledgement. Right. Even when I'm with, right. I'm the only brother, and I got so many people at lunch with me, and, and I'm the only brother, and I come through, and I see you sitting over there, I'm going to be like, what's up? You've seen me do mm, it over man. the time. All see, the time. I do it every time because I have to acknowledge you. It's in your culture. <laughs> it's part of your blood. Right? Even it, in it, it, Chicago, it, it, wherever. It, it makes you feel wrong. Yeah. Right? Right, it's part of your blood. And so I feel like, you know, we have to start to communicate with each other more. And the internet's done a lot, podcasts have done a lot, Zoom has done all these things are kind of but we gotta find a way to start building on some things. Yeah. Right. You know, it's nothing wrong with world stars, you know, do your thing, have fun, it's all that's cool. But we gotta find some ways to communicate so we can build. Right. How did the pyramids was it the alien or did it just some folks just go build something? Have you ever asked yourself sometime that being in a in the uh, communication field, uh, <laughs> some some kind of way, we have the worst time trying to figure out communication. <laughs> we do. <laughs> yes, it is a it's a it's a slightly a running gag that <laughs> you it's know something what I'm that that right. we I talk about it all the time with a lot of the guys that I've worked right. with over the years. It'd be like, man, for us to be in communication, it seemed like we have the hardest time trying to put it together. Yeah, you know, um, and a lot of things get in the way. Yeah. Right. You know, things I feel like they get in the way are when you get a really large corporation, people become insulated from the customer. Yeah. And so something I tell folks at times, especially in a, in a personal meeting, I may bring an extra seat up to the table on purpose. And that's they say, hot. well, what's that for? I say, well, that's the seat for the customer. That's hot. Right. Let's make sure we keep them in mind about this conversation we have. We're having. Because sometimes mechanics just want to turn wrenches. I, I, I lead an automation team. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. I have to be mindful to make sure that we're not just building stuff for the sake of building stuff. 
Yeah. Right. We're building something for the sake of driving a specific goal that aligns to the whole corporate goal, which is number one, the service folks who need the stuff we need at the best price, ease of, you know, ease of doing business. I, if you're not thinking about that, then you just start building a bunch of stuff. And it's like, why are we even building this? Yeah. Right. But you may, you know, be at a certain level and you feel like life should go this way. And, you know, you just want to, you know, build out your fiefdom and say, I got this much stuff I've built. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that doesn't serve anybody. Right. Yeah. And so sometimes I think, you know, in the corporate worlds, um, folks are insulated from that competitiveness, that customer touch. You can't talk to a customer any kind of way. Hey, you better, hey, wait a minute. Somebody walk, hey, wait a minute. Talk straight now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is yeah. this is for all the cards. Right. This is for the dollars. This yeah. is the reason. Yeah. We're, okay. Yeah. That's who pay our bill. Right. This is how the lights are going to be. Okay. That's right. Right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. How can I help you today? Yeah. Yeah. Right. But internally, do we talk to our internal customers that way? Yes, ma'am. How can I help you today? We have to get there. We have to. Um, that's one of the things that we we're, we're challenging ourselves with. I can say on my on where I'm at because of the way that. Um, we have broken out in the last uh, so-called year, two years, and we had to get back to that. You have to get back to where you put the customer first. I remember, like I said, I always reflect back to TCI or Optel, but one thing that TCI catered to was the customer first analogy. It right. was always the customer first, and then it was a family, and then it, you know, it, it would go up. It would it get to employee, but, but they had a building block. But check this out. Think about this. And I'm not condoning, but just, and I'm not judging either, but either, but think about this. How many folks that come from underprivileged communities, right? Live in underserved neighborhoods, making a way their own way. They know this. This is not something that needs to even be taught to them. They know this intimately. And so that skill is transferable. 100% in the corporate space. But do we always think of it that way? Mm. Right? That's actually a competitive advantage. Right? But do we think of it that way? Or even, you know, folks talk about code switching. And they, you know, try to make it sound bad. Oh, you talk like this at work, you talk like this. Wait a minute. Mm. If um you spoke two I languages. Get that a lot. Wait, if you spoke English <laughs> and Spanish <laughs> and French, would somebody look at you crazy? No. Because you're able to speak to three different cultures mm -hmm. and communicate effectively with, with them, they don't look at. Them. They typically pay you a little bit extra if you can speak those extra languages. Exactly. It's like but who's who's? Who, so know, why is it that when we do it, we with, speak in two different dialects, or if we understand two different cultures, or maybe even know how to market to mm -hmm. two different demographics? I don't understand the purpose. The, the I think a issue. lot of times it's just, I mean, and I think that's what separates the men from the boys. You have to be able to be a, uh, a one who, who, who doesn't shy back when it comes down to understanding um, those two different worlds. Yeah. Um, I think that's what's held, my, held me for so many years is being able to understand, you know, being able to see through that because I never, I, I never wanted to be like anyone else, but I wanted to be a better me for God. So right. I really never cared. I, I mean, I was going to do it because I had, first of all, I had to feed my kids and my family. Right. But at the end of the day, also to use the right dialect and the, and the correct English, the correct grammar. I mean, that's just a part of, I think it's professionalism. So I don't trip when people have an issue with that. I mean, I mean, that's cool, you know, but I understand they're on, on levels too. That's right. one thing we got to get, you know, because certain people are just not on your level. Correct. You understand what I'm saying? There's Correct. levels to this, like Meek Mills. So. Oh, yeah. It's you levels. know what I'm saying? There's levels. So and we can't treat it like just because a guy don't get us. Maybe somewhere down the line he can evolve too, but you got to keep being the best you you can be in his Correct. presence. Correct. Correct. And as, that goes for folks on both sides yeah, of the point, right? That's um, esoteric folks trying to look at hood folks crazy. That's hood folks Same trying thing. to look at education Vice versa. folks crazy. And and we have to we have to get there. I mean, I think we've come a long ways from where I know where I come from. 
we've 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 crossed a lot of different sure. Yeah. Different. If you look at the children of uh, of Israel in the Bible and how they came over into the wilderness, and when they was in the wilderness, they was roaming and roaming, and and then finally they went over to Jordan, yeah. Yeah. and now they in the Promised Land. And then when they got there, they still had battles, and then they right. keep traveling, and then Babylonian captivity comes somewhere down the line. Right. But you keep seeing the changes, and right. I think that we are moving in the right direction as a culture. Yeah. But I think it's moving at a slow pace. But you may not. We may not. Martin Luther King said, I may not get there with you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I may yeah. not get there with you. But I think that we're moving the needle. And I yeah. think that's something that we have to enjoy. I do. I think, um, look, you, you, you have to be passionate about whatever it is that you're doing. You know, I'm into technology. I'm also into mentoring. Um, I also, um, you know, I'm very passionate about um, diversity and inclusion, right? I do a lot um in the community or with my corporation related to diversity and inclusion. I like it. Um, I was so proud of you when I looked you up <laughs> because I know that I know the challenges that you faced. It, it hit different when you know, right. when you're in yeah. the process. Yeah. I knew that. I didn't say nothing to my wife. I'd say, I'm going to get him there and I'm going to just see where, where this <laughs> thing go. Because at the end of the day, I understand the challenges that you had to face in order to even be just out with it like that. Yeah. To be mm -hmm. out with it and do it in a way to where people can accept it. Mm. That's the part of you that yes. I love. Yeah, yeah. You understand it, what I'm saying? Because everybody can't do what you're doing. It, well, you know, I feel like people can, but I appreciate what you're saying. I, I don't, everybody can because they don't have the, it's something God put in you in order for you to be able to tackle the things that you're tackling. That's all I'm sure, saying. Sure. Some people didn't have those, right. those situations to where the education system that you went through or the process, the mother and the, I don't know about your father and mother, but I can tell you there has to be something that stimulated this in you. Yeah. So, you know, um, man, I'm from South Dallas. I know I get it. And so, um, it wasn't easy. And then on top of that, you know, um, my father, um, he committed suicide when I was seven. I get it. And, you know, growing up without a father um, was tough, you know. And, you know, on top of all that was going on and, you know, finding a way out of no way, making a dollar out of 15 cents, um, one and one make 11. Um, you know, all of these, we're in a collaborative phase, not competing against each other. Right. All of these things, right, um, were, I don't want to say taught, but they were just a part of my culture, of my upbringing, you know. And so the fact that, you know, I didn't have a father and that money was short and we had to figure out a way to make ends meet. And, um, you know, I used to catch the 44 Oakland up to Romine and go oh, to St. Anthony and, you know, all of that, you know, and, 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 and mama working overtime and I watch her work overtime in the morning, in the evening, on the weekends. And I, I saw it all. And so um, that experience coupled with some God bless some mentors, you know, big brothers and sisters, um, Kenneth Gwynn, my big brother, um, you know, those mentors just meant so much to me and helped to shape me to who I am, you know, because nobody's born knowing this stuff. Nobody's born knowing how to get it right from the jump. The thing I can say, man, is that you, you know, um, you can tell, man, that, 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 like I said earlier, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, not, not at the pace we would like, you know, um, I listen to a lot of different people, read a lot of great books, man. But the thing I can say is nothing teaches you like life. Oh, man. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, and life is something that, that it'll teach you. Uh, and, and, and the fact that you didn't have a father figure in your life, because at seven, you don't even hardly remember what's going on with who your father is. But I can say that, you know, I went through some things of dysfunctionality because that's what you're talking about. And except for the difference was yours was like, uh, he's not here, he committed suicide. Mine was like my mama shooting at my daddy and fighting every weekend mm. and me trying to be a child mm. and, and trying to develop in that environment. Right, trying to find North. Exactly, so it, it, it's I, I talk about this often on the show because it affects you in two different ways. Then you're ripped apart from your 
father and you you love your father now he can't come around when he does he's crying or he's pretty much drunk or drinking and alcohol is taking over him and then you with a stepfather and then you know you traveling because he's in the military this is dysfunctionality right. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. The same, except for you're going through a situation where you're feeling that disconnect and you're creating that why. Right. This is your why is what right. you're talking about. Me, right. I'm looking at it and I'm learning things and so inquisitive as a young man trying to figure out as a 13, 10, 10 13, okay, I, if I do this, this happened. Not being told it by a mentor, but really looking at my stepfather. Just, you know, I'm more look at you and find out yeah. what I'm, who I am. You know, okay, yeah, he did that, but I could do this. And you're not my daddy, I'm going back. And then I get back to my pops and, you know, he's going to stop drinking. So people go through phases. Right. But all of these phases wrapped up in one is me. Right. You understand what right. I'm saying? So I'm looking at all of this and you dealing with what you're dealing with and it affects us because we never did have anything to cure us when we went through all our ancestors went through the stuff they went through. So now we're trying to understand different things and financial financial things. We don't know right. because we're not being talking. We're tossed to and fro. Correct. So we have. Not, so I'm going to tell you when I hit rock bottom was when my mother passed away and I was able to bump my head enough to where. Once she passed away, I didn't I didn't have no safety net. I felt no more. So I was able to, I got in the word, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And it said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Yeah. I was able to change my narrative by saying that I didn't have to go by where I come from any longer. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was able to clean that up in the fact that God gave me a second chance is the way I look at it. Man, I tell you, when you turn around... Do you see where I'm coming from? Oh, okay. yeah. Listen, let me, hear, me, hear me on this. You're going to know I, I feel you. When you turn around and you see those footprints in the sand. Yeah. And you see that one set of footprints that never left you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. It gets yeah. real. Yeah, because you by yourself and now you got to hug on to what's real. Yeah, the we, real hell, the father. The real father that holds you is where we going, where I'm going with that. I love what you just said. Yeah, yeah. That's you know. the real father. And I think that's what helped me to understand that I had a spiritual father. I'm being real. I'm talking about a real yes. spiritual father. Yeah, Something yeah. that, that wasn't going to never leave me and all forsake Look, life me. Will, life will try to convince you that you don't have one. Oh, no, no. When you... when. Life will try to convince you. The that mentors you don't have that came one. in your life, did anybody ever relate that to you at a young age as far as having a spiritual fight, being that the, that the God was your father? Yeah, so. You see you where know, I'm coming I'm, from? Yeah, yeah I, do, cause, cause, I do. You know, um, my, my mother started me off really young in church, and my father was really big in church. It was crazy when he committed suicide because I remember he would go to Dixon Circle and talk to people who wow. had, um, you know, been in violent crimes and you know, prison yeah, and, yeah, you know, he would break up fights and, you know, uh, I would be with him, you know, and you see seen him. Oh yeah. 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 I seen him, you know, pull the, his beautiful Cadillac over, get out and go stop two men fighting in the street. Wow. Don't know them from Adam. Just stop them. Get back in the car and let's go. Wow. He was that kind of guy, you know, That's if you, what's up. Yeah, you know, and so, um, but, um, I think I lost my train of thought. No, but, um, um, let me ask you this. Um, with your father, you losing your father at such a young age and to suicide. Yeah. Did you ever get counseling or anything like that after oh, yeah. the fact? Absolutely. So directly after that, um, we went to counseling for about a year. My, my family, um, mom, sister, myself went to fam um, counseling. And it helped. You know, um, I have no... It, I, maybe that's where I was going. I have no issues with the fact that my father's gone. Now, at the end of the day, I'm a grown man. I have to realize that, hey, he made a decision, might right. have been sick, made a decision, and he actually did leave. You know, that's the truth of the matter. And I had left him some crazy ways, and I understand the circumstances, but that was what it was. And so as a father, my son, I'll never leave, right? That's like the thing that I probably took with me the most. Other than that, my father was the man. I love him. He's Superman. Right. My mother didn't talk down on him and I have no issues with her or him. You know what I'm saying? Um, I love them both. And and the older I get, I see um, his spirit, his drive, his will, my mother's um, might and will and intellect in me. Because oh, yeah. the crazy thing that um, is coming to my mind, not crazy, but um, the thing that I'm getting from all of this is the fact that 
And the reason why we do this is the fact that there's so many people out there who are suffering silently. Right. Living their life, supplying for their kids, their wife, everything, and put on a face. And right. you will never know that they're hurting on the inside. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So the reason why we do this is that we bring, yes, we bring people on here, but we always touch on the mental health side of it. Yeah. Because to let people know they're not the only ones who are going through things. They're not the only ones who have to move on. And I've met people, some mainly women, who have had whether try to kill themselves or had was in depression and to me who've never gone to that stage mm -hmm. and I'm looking at them and I'm saying, but you have kids to live for. You have so much to live for. How can you not think about that when you're going through these, you know, mental right. stage? And they say that you just don't think about it. Right. Like an echo chamber. Right. Like if you if all you did was listen to MSNBC all day or if all you did was listen to Fox News all day, then you would have one side of the story. Correct. Whether you like the other side or not, you Correct. just only have one side of the story. And so I think when folks are going through depression, um, unfortunately, whatever perfect storm they've wound themselves up, you know, found themselves in, um, found themselves in it's created an echo chamber where they just can't get out of it. And so it's just one bad thing after the other. And it starts to ring in their mind. And I think, do you think it's people just trying to be perfect, trying to um, put off that energy, like everything over here is fine. You know, nothing is wrong. And not, and not feel like it's okay to say, I am stressed or I am going through that or try to find help. Yeah, but you know, usually folks, oh, I can't say usually, sometimes I think that happens because there's maybe something a little deeper, maybe something from, um, they say if you don't solve the pains of your childhood, you mm -hmm. live them the rest of your life, right? I agree. And so, you know, often it's those kinds of things. It's, you know, somebody um, wasn't the favorite child and they got shunned, right? And they no one ever atoned for that. They've had to carry that their entire lives. That's rough. You know, somebody made them feel like the black sheep, right, for whatever reason. You were the bright when everybody else was dark, right? Or whatever, whatever reason and that I've is, right? That. Yeah, you know, um, and people have carried that stuff on. And then, you know, you on comes life and adulthood, bills, credit. Oh, your skin's dark. Uh, your, your credit may not be up. Oh, your loan, oh, what, your, your house, your, you know, oh, you got some kids. And, you know, and here we go. You know, think it could just build up on you, you know, unfortunately. And, and that's, you know. That's, that's it's a sad case, but it's a stereotypical world, you know, like we live in, like everybody profile you in a way. And it's sad because it's a challenging thing to get past, especially when you got this on you. But I think you know what you it know is. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's not it's not an easy fix now because you, know, you gotta you gotta go in there and prove yourself. That stereotype thing is big though. Yeah. So check this out. Would anybody have guessed ten years ago that a Canadian Jewish light skinned guy would be at the pinnacle of hip hop. No. Would anyone have guessed 15 years ago that a child from New Orleans would be one of the greatest lyricists of our era, Lil Wayne? Or some, you know, uh, child who's fiending for themselves from some New York projects called Marcy would you know, birth one of the greatest businessmen and greatest writers of our era, right? Stereotypes, I almost curse. Stereotypes <laughs> can go somewhere, you know, because yeah. I mean, honestly, you're taking the easy way out. You're not even getting to know somebody, right? You're judging from the cover. How many, I mean, uh, let's take another one. M Michaela de Prince, a black girl um, whose skin, she has a skin discoloration, mm -hmm. right? She's born in Sierra Leone in the mm -hmm. middle of civil war. Her insides cut out. She sees other people killed in front of her. She's thrown into an orphanage, right? She's the last of the orphanage kids. She gets the, she's the run of the litter. She gets the last clothes, the last food, the last everything. She is a world renowned, beautiful Model. ballet oh, dancer, yeah. right? I mean, you would be hard pressed to find someone better. Wow. You know, and so stereotypes, right? Somebody would have wrote her off in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. No, 
I would say that the greatest prison in this world is the one that people put themselves in their in their mind, that people put themselves in, worried about what other people think of them. Correct. Right. Some people flip it and use it as motivation, as stereotype, right. to prove them wrong, to say, right. I'm going to be somebody, I'm going to get somewhere. No matter how much you try to put me into this box, I will not remain in this box because you have no control. If I can't get to where I can, I want to excel right here, I will get somewhere else. Correct. Because what God has for me, nobody I, can I take I think it. about what y'all both are saying, and I, I relate everything to Scripture, of course. Um so as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. So you're able to break bonds. You know what I mean? And I, I think, you know, uh, the thing you was talking about, uh, about the mind thing, it's casting down imaginations and every high thought that exalts itself against God. So you look at these scriptures for me. Right. And I put them into play in my mind of how to cast down those imaginations, those things, or, or be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. I just look at things from a perspective of always fighting fighting with what God gave me. He says, he says that I'm a peculiar people. He says that I'm a chosen generation. No matter what anyone else tells you, if you have, you have to fill your spiritual void, man, if you don't fill your spiritual void, then you can get caught up in the mishap of what people spoke into your life. So that's the whole right. game. You got to be able to counteract to anything that someone comes up against you with, with something that I deal with, with the word of God. Right. And you have to know it. In order to fight, you have to know it. it. And to me, it's a war zone, your mind. Right. So anytime something comes up, it first comes to your mind to attack you. And then as you continue to fight, you become a better soldier. Correct. Correct. Yeah. You know, scripture is the bottom line. And so, <laughs> um, you know, it, it just doesn't get any more um, matter of fact than that for me. You know, um, you know, like I say, when you look back at those footprints and you realize yeah. what God has done for you all this time. Oh, yeah. Right. You wake up and it's like, okay, now you're really woke. You're not sleepwalking. You're not claiming you woke and you're really not. You're really woke. Yeah. Do you right. pray for your enemies? That's something. Right. Do you pray for people who look at you to see you down? Right. You have to, you have to learn to say, if you really knew what you was dealing with, you would be standing on the top of it saying, oh, that's what this is? Correct. Correct. That's that's the attitude. Correct. So Correct. you have to take that approach in order to be able to understand when things come at you, it ain't even on a level to even deal with you. Yeah. And that's where that's the game. Yeah. I mean, and <laughs> it, 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 yeah. Yeah. Look, it, it's deep. You know, if you um, I'm, I'm fortunate enough, I've been able to um, sit with some CEOs right? and some CTOs and some CTOs. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've, I've sat with a, few, a couple. And so um, one thing that I notice when I'm, I'm with um, those folks is they they talk in in um, terms of themes. Yeah. Right. They, they think of things in, in, in trends. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and they, they do that because they understand that history repeats itself. Yeah. And to some degree, life is cyclical. And sure, things are always going to keep changing. Of course, there's going to be innovation. But if you can understand the trends, then you can anticipate and you can get ahead of it. Mm. Right. And so you can use it as a competitive advantage. And that's just coming with wisdom. Yeah. Right? And so um, I, I, for me, I, I try to look at those trends, as you said, to stand on top and have a kind of oh, bird's man. eye view to see man. things. So that you can say, look, you know, I've been making mistakes in this area. Let me get better here. Or, hey, you know what? I could do better there. Let me do something here. You know, those kinds of things. Or um, to see, hey, look, you know, these folks don't mean me well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been, <laughs> you know. The thing, I'll say, just to add to what you're saying, you know, when you walk in a room and, and you have this august panel of people that are sitting around and you, I mean, you, it's, uh, it's only a couple of you in the room. So right. you walk in. I, I became comfortable with that because, because I felt like I was at an advantage because I've done it so many times. Yeah. So I look at it totally different. And then a lot of the CTOs and a lot of the CEOs and, 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 and the CFOs and the people that I sit with, when I sit there and then you look, I'm friends with Steve Madden and every, I've dealt with so many different people. They don't even realize it. Yeah. And they be talking right. like they are just in this spot. And yeah. I'm looking at them like stereotyping you with Yeah, 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 they, but like. it's not really even right. to me it's like they're in a, they're at a disadvantage. Correct. Because of what I've known and what I've seen yeah, and what I've gone through. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like I'm looking at you like 
you're talking, but to me, it's so beneath the way I think. Yeah. And then you talk to somebody. I've been in evaluation. I never forget it. And at the time, we owned seven stores, and the guy had no idea. And he said, "You know what? You're not a people's person." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, "Man, our bills are so high, money. If you, you only knew how many people I have to deal with." It's it's because they don't understand who I am. Or again, them, those stereotypes Correct. making assumptions. Correct. Like Correct. you really got to know somebody before you just you know make that kind of judgment. Um, you never know. Who's an artist? Who's a technologist? Who's a scientist? Who's an engineer? You know, Correct. you never know. You you just don't know that. Michael Jordan didn't make his high school basketball team. There it Let is. me say this one more time, right? Michael Jordan, who every little three year old right now wants a pair of his shoes, and his mom is, or her mom is probably buying them right now on Amazon. Buy it now, <laughs> right? Hasn't played basketball in 30 years and they still buying this stuff. He didn't make his high school team. You could have counted him out a thousand times. In college, they, his coach played games with him. You could have counted him out a thousand times. He refused to go away. He was the anomaly. Wow. When you hear his um, Hall of Fame expect, uh, acceptance speech, you kind of get it. But he was the anomaly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, so. it happens, man. Shannon Sharp the same way. These guys come from nothing, man. I, All of them do. Uh, yeah. Everybody, and, you know, and, it, and not only them. I, I have to say this. My brother always tell me say, because I'll say something like Eric Thomas got a good story. You heard me say that mm -hmm. before. And my brother say, but your story is way deeper. You know, we come from a place where there wasn't no electricity and all we had was kerosene lamps and we carried water every day. I was so so when you look at where I'm from, a country boy, they don't even know what I came through. When 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 I came to Dallas for that seven fifty an hour, yeah, because I was making five in the country, and I got here and got that seven fifty and they told me all I had to do was go up in the attic or something. That was the most simple thing. I was like, where is it at? Hey, 750 is pretty good at one point. That's right. right. Yeah, this was a long yeah. time. I was like, man, I'm Thanks. banking and I, and I and I don't have to be outside in the hot sun uh cutting wood. That direct, and, and, that direct deposit in Nations Bank off Buckley. Come on. Oh man, or, or, or off Centerville. It was uh, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right there off Centerville, baby. You know, when when I when when I finally realized that, you know, cuz sometimes uh we really can't see the picture from being in the picture. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so you really don't know how good you got it. And you probably could tell some stories being from Jamaica mm -hmm. where people take things for granted. I remember when we was over there and one lady was like, they, they don't have this, they don't have that, you know, over here. But a lot of times people can take things for granted, man. We are blessed. I'm going to be honest with you. For you to be here, some of the guys that you treaded past in the South that not living anymore. Right. It's a bunch of them. Oh, yeah. It's a bunch of them that your daddy jumped out to help the ones he helped. But it was two or three more on the other side killing yeah. people, man. Yeah. I know about the South. Yeah. I come up here and I, I was amazed, but I, I, I won't say I was amazed. It was, I was amused by the South because I'm a hustler. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, was, I, was, I was amused it's by it. It's way different. You know? but, but I definitely shout out to you for making it out. Yeah. And I say making it out because you're still here. Not that you don't go in the hood or nothing no yeah. more, but you made it out because you're still alive to talk yeah. about things. Yeah. There's a... There's a that, that that's a gift in you. I appreciate. It. You know, I think that um the thing that I think about when you talk about trends or themes, um, I think about some of the things I believe in. Like one and one makes eleven. Yeah, right? yeah, I like. I it. feel like um, you know, as a people, black people, we're in the collaborative phase, not the competition phase. Right? Mm. When I think about, you know, our culture, our 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 own demographics, you know, black men, black women, you know, partnership. Yeah, that's division. That's not how you go up. It's not how you go down. And so um, we have to co communicate at least on that level so that we can go to the next level and communicate, right? Somebody heard about Dogecoin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in 2019. Mm -hmm. And for those that did, you may not know what the cabbage patch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real good right yeah, now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout Say out man. to Rob, shout out to Robin Hood. Hey man, mm -hmm. I, I got that on there. Yeah, I, I think, I, like I said, I, I think at at some point, man, 
we bridged the gap even more. I seen some things happen during COVID that changed a lot of things. You know, I didn't, you know, far as the job thing, you know, far as our jobs, it got more aggressive because mm -hmm. of what we do. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing I can say is culture barriers is going to take some time to break, but I think they're breaking. I think we're yeah. seeing things that never happened in this country before happening. And I think it's just a matter of time before all of those walls come, come tumbling down like a Jericho. Yeah. You know, it, it's just something you got to yeah. realize. We can't sit back and not acknowledge the process, man. Just having a good day. Yeah. Going through the day saying yeah. this was a great day. Yeah. This is a day that the Lord has made. Yeah. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Well, you have to have that mindset in order to keep going and keep going because really it's not about you. It's about that seven year old. It's Correct. about that. It, it, you see what Correct. I'm saying? Correct. It's about that. That that thirteen and fifteen year old, the next generation. Right. It always been about the next generation, right? And and that's why we gotta we gotta we gotta be privy to that, and, and we gotta do things like this because we have something that that my mother and them didn't have. We have something that we control. Correct. This Correct. communication thing has taken on a whole nother level, and I think a lot of times our people are not acknowledging that and taking advantage of it on these type of platforms. But I, I, I plan to make a difference. You, may, you you bring up a point about, you know, it's about the next generation. I of agree course. With, I agree with that. Um, but I think that it's, um, you have to keep it in perspective. Okay. And so if you think about, you know, what is the ultimate measure? What is the number one ruler? There's so many ways to measure something. What is the ultimate of all measurement? It's time. You win the Super Bowl, great. You got five of them. You won it five times, mm. five years. Mm. You have four championships. Jordan, you have six. <gasps> right? Mm -hmm. Time. Every I don't care what you, you were CEO for how long? Or you were CEO for how many decades? Time. Right? It's all time. It all runs back. To, you're, the, the Mayan Empire ran for how long? The Egyptian Empire ran for how long? The British Empire ran for how long? It's time. It's the measurement of everything. And so if you get to, that's on a macro level, you look on a micro to a family and pass it on to the next generation, right? I don't care, even if it's just, I mean, you could get tech and really science and, you know, sales passing on other sales, but still the, the point remains, it's passing on knowledge, insight, wisdom, passing on DNA code, whatever, passing on to the next generation. But the thing that we have to do when we pass it on to the next generation is you have to prepare them not spoil them. That's true. I mean, having a 13-year-old and a 15-year-old and being here for 15 years and them growing up in this store is all the process we need, especially the way you talk about your dad and how he broke up the fight. So they watch the process. I have pictures from all the way mm -hmm, up. Mm -hmm. The reason we, we done this, it wasn't because we had to, but we had to because of the fact of being an example to my children right. because my father was an example to me and being his own, you know, having his own. Yeah. I seen the part where he worked for somebody, but then I seen the part where he had his own. Right. It wasn't like mine, but right. he still had his own. Right. And therefore, I had to instill that in my children. There you go. And how do you do that? Perfect. Well, my wife comes. She says, 15 years ago, now almost 16, I, I want to have a baby. You see what I'm saying? Even though I had my older children, I was like, dang. Kind of too old for this, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but I was like, man, do it. I said, you know what, God, you, he, he had to help me on this. So he, you know, he put this together because I wanted to give, man. He, and it helped ignite some in me that helps all the children right. too, because they got to see something that you pulled out. Thank you. Yeah, and don't get me You're wrong. <laughs> and yeah, one, and, you know, and, and just to close that point, but to hit this one, don't get me wrong, you know. Giving your kids a lot of stuff or whatever, that's all wonderful. I ain't nothing, nothing against nothing that. Against it's it. just make sure there's a risk reward. They understand the value. That's of right. It. But the point that you just made, man, I mean, y'all are a living example of what um of what black excellence is. Man, thanks. Right. You have you have partnership. That is priceless. Wow. Partnership. What can you do with partnership? One and one collaboration. Did we just talk about? Right? Yes, sir. Exp exponential growth. The cheat codes get to the end for fast. For right, skip all the drama. We're gonna skip past the twos, the threes, the fours. We're gonna get straight to the left. Double digit growth. That's partnership, right? You do, and you said 15, sixteen years, like yeah, been together eighteen, but had the children. Sixteen year old. She'll be that's, sixteen. 
that's August compounding 15th. exponential yeah. growth, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. you you can't lose like that in partnership, right? Where you're working together for a common goal versus um, maybe not working together. Yeah, yeah. Not talking. Communication not is key. Yeah, all of that, you know. But th- that's the that's the that's the. I mean, that's the perfect example of what black excellence is. Yeah. Sure, we all love Obama and Michelle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For sure. And again, nobody would have guessed that a black man, middle name Hussein, post-Iraq war would ever be elected president. Correct. But, um, right, but partnership. Yeah, Yeah, y'all got it. We we definitely working at it. It It ain't nowhere near easy. I mean, nothing, if it was easy, everybody would be right. doing it. You know, I think, um, I mean, two is better than one. Mm-hmm. But if one fall, the other one will lift up. And a threefold card is not easily broken. Right. So I think that's the whole game. Like, you have to you have to have a foundation built in God for me. Right. That's just how I feel. And right. I'll continue to say it because without that, it's, it, it's, it's nothing. You don't even enjoy life. I, I can't see how I would even enjoy it. I remember how I did it when I was drinking and smoking and hustling. Younger. Yeah, but it was a phase because at the end of the day, it wasn't true happiness. Because cause I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even figure out how to get some sleep a lot right. of times. But it's a peace that surpasses all knowledge and understanding when you come into grips with who you are. Self-awareness is very, very big. And I'm going to go back and say, how many people... Who didn't have a whole lot of money, didn't have a whole lot of house, didn't have a whole lot of resources, had a whole lot of God in their family. Wow. Those, again, I'm gonna say these are transferable skills that will fare very well in whatever profession <laughs> definitely that they choose to go into. I just truly, you know. truly believe it, man. Thank you so much, man. So, how can people, what if a let me ask you this, man. I gotta ask him the top three questions. I was about to pass right by it, man. Nah, you watch you the show, man. Him, you have to yeah, ask you see, him. We he was to talking pick. about Lil lyrics Wayne and, and all music yeah. and all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. I get it. I get it. I was gonna pass you up on it, but you the one put your foot in your mouth when you said oh, Lil shit. Wayne, man. Top three artists of all time, man. Dead yeah. or alive. Any genre. Any genre. Dead oh or alive. God. Yeah, see, we get that same reaction every time. I love the reaction, man. I'm, that, I'm just happy, see, man. Listen. I listen to a lot of music. It doesn't though, matter. Man. I only need three. Ain't that what I say? Three. Three. Dead I, or alive. I can't, I can't understand why it's so hard for people to just pick they three. They just say, They're like, can I do five? Can I'm I do like, five? Right. Can I do? Right. Top three. Three. Number one? Michael Jackson. I said, there knew you were going to say that. Money Mike. Number he did thrill on these sure mics, just so you know. The mics this you're exact talking kind in. of okay. mics. <laughs> you like whatever. Okay. <laughs> Number two. It's after me. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, his song is like synonymous with Halloween. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that whole yeah, thing is got, serious, I mean, yeah, bro. You got a whole holiday. I can't. I like, can't. You, took you a know, holiday. usually I'll be like, yeah, yeah you yeah, but took a holiday. He killed the game, man. Thirty years later, he killed the game. Oh, gosh. Um, That's good. Look, if I go with Mike, I gotta go with Prince. Prince. Man, come on. Play <laughs> twenty seven <laughs> instruments. I, I found that. I bet you I know his Play twenty seven instruments. Did you know that? Yeah, I actually met Prince. Did what? Oh yeah. We should have talked about that. That's a good story. I, it's a Charlie <laughs> Murphy story, actually. Dang. Ooh, yeah. What I, happened? I, I met Prince in South Dallas. He came to the no. South. Come on, man. You think I'm gonna come on your show and lie to you? Dang, that's heavy. I never knew. What did you say to him the first time you met him? What I said is one thing. What he said was the crazy part. What was it? So, look, um, Erica was throwing a party, um, her birthday party. She used to do them in person, you know what mm-hmm, I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then I guess she, um, you know, Bomb Factory, all of that. But before then, it was like a private event, okay? And so, you know, it was at a spot on MLK. You know, okay. she had the spot, right? All the black eye keys up there with the bow ties, you know, come through the door, whatever. And so it was amazing. You know, it's like Cavassier and um, Moed or something on every table or something. You know, it's 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 nice. Um, bunch of stars there. Roy Ayers, Shaka Khan, um, Bilal. Wow. Um, That's heavy. Big Gip. That's his heavy. Wife, his wife, Joy. Um, wow. And uh, Prince and Good Shaka. Good Big Gip. No, nah, just Gip was there. Okay. It was just, oh, Common was there. That's hot. Oh, wow. Okay. Common was checking out Erica way back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. And so, 
Shaka Khan and Prince came together in a stretch Rolls Royce Roadster where the pipes come off the engine down. Uh huh. Right. Never saw one before or after, right? Wow. Parked right in front of it in the little. Okay. Uh -huh. And so Shaka Khan, she's so nice. Hey, baby, y'all having a good time? You know, it's like, oh my God, it's Shaka Khan. Yeah. Exactly. Prince, he was the only person there that had bodyguards. He had three bodyguards. I never seen humans this big before. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, I agree. They look like. And he's not that big. Listen, these bodyguards look like the Cowboys offensive line when we went back to back. In 95. I'm talking about. Okay. 95 a long time ago. So you be tripping. These dudes is huge. Okay. So I'm, I'm ear hustling just to touch. Trying to get up. <laughs> just to touch. I'm not in this conversation. I just can hear that his conversation has ended. And so. I was a little thinner. I slipped between the two bodyguards and I just turned to him. I'm like, look, I'm standing here with, my, with a couple of my partners. I'm like, ain't no way in the world Prince coming to South Dallas and not going to speak to me. Exactly. It's, like, it's like a player's club. Um, <laughs> scene. What, what, what so happened? So I lean man? in, I say, I, I lean into him. I say, um, what's up? Man, I turn around. I, I said that to Prince. Like, what's up? Man, Prince turned around. He looked at me, man. He was like, just don't laugh. Don't laugh. He looked at me. He was like. <laughs> woo. Woo. <laughs> no. Nah, was he like that? Cello. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, what did you say? Look, all my homeboys, my homeboys looked at me kind of funny like. And I was like. He from Minnesota. That's how they say what's up. It's cool. Oh, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It was, like, it's cool. it was it's cool. different, wasn't it? <laughs> you not, but that's Prince. Hey, yeah. So Charlie Murphy was there as well. No, no, no. It was just a. Uh, I'm gonna tell you that story off the air. Okay, the okay. Other Prince story. Wow, yeah, wow, I'll man. It's, it's crazy because you know, like I said, to be in the presence of that. I wish I'd have been able to be in the presence. That's of That's a story. That. that is a good. Story. So let's get the top three. Was what was Michael Jackson, Michael Prince, Prince, and who's the third? I ain't forgot. Seriously, who I'm gonna give it to? Give it to him. And I have somebody in my head that I think you're gonna say, but let okay, me see let's if I'm see. Right. Man, if I gotta give it to anybody, <sighs> I want to give it to a dude, man. But on the cool, it's Beyonce, I work, work all these cats. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, y'all. I agree. She I agree. Them all. She I agree. Them all. I agree. And she's I'm from sorry, Houston, man. so that that, look, that, that, that got him. That kept him yeah, in. Look, I'm a Wayne, Jay Z, all of yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, B, but, yeah. Shout but, out to say, the Queen B. Stop real. playing. I for sure. Don't, so it was, was, so was Mike Prince Tupac. and Beyonce, oh, man. On, I mean, you know I love all them, but yeah, yeah. You have get, you seen Beyonce? Did you see when she fell in them heels? Come on, knock it off. Yeah, man. Come on, come on, come on. Listen, it ain't the heights how you do it. It's how when when things go wrong and how you handle that. That's Definitely, true. man. So, you know, if you ever got somebody that you want to send on Boss Talk 101, because I know you meet people and you like me, you you know, if you feel sure. like this would be the platform for me, please let us know. Absolutely. And I'm going to give you my number. We're going to exchange yeah, the information, yeah. man. And uh, hopefully we can have that conversation about the book. I wasn't just kidding. I, I really am looking to do that because me and you can do that. Well, you know, I, I, I really hadn't had nobody else that I could do that. That you thought with. you could do yeah. it with. No. I believe wholeheartedly that one and one make 11. Already. Let's do it. That's what's up, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, David. Um, anything, you have anything else? Man, we appreciate you. Oh, I had one more question. Okay, go ahead. Where do you see yourself in two more years? Okay, just two? Just two. Because five is like... Yeah. Two, yeah. So two, two is, yeah, yeah, two is good. At, um, two years. In two years... I plan to shake up the marketing and advertising world. Wow. Wow. That's good stuff. Um, we appreciate you. I appreciate you. We love you. We always tell our customers. Hey. I, I guess that. Because at the end of the day, man, um, you're my brother. Yeah. And we shouldn't be afraid to say that. Correct. Or that I love you or that you are my brother. Correct. And I wish the best for you. Correct. Right. Much and success. tomorrow is not promised for anyone. Correct. So you always have to say these things while people are in your presence. Giving right. us, giving out these roses while That's you're right. here. That's right. Thank you so much, Thank man. Thank you. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.